Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm making a mini cattle drive this morning, <clears throat> bringing them off another farm. And uh, we built a lane back to here. Uh, this section was already grazed, so we just shot them through it. But look what we got waiting for them. Uh, we've got this split into two paddocks. There's about uh, 370 head coming in there. There's 160, our lead cow. Gosh, she's a beaut. What a beautiful cow. I love that cow. I love all my cows. Every cow's got its own unique personality. But these animals are flat, ready to be moved. We get here in this morning, we got over there. We pushed them a little bit last night, cleaned up an area, <clears throat> cleaned up an area where the bulls had been. But uh, this, this is where we had uh, the 79 bulls earlier and we were strip grazing them across this farm. And uh, that was about 60 days ago. And look what we did. So we put down all the carbon. You remember that video where the bulls were laying it all on the ground? Uh, I say all, they ate probably 30% of it. But they, because we gave them little uh, rectangles down these ridges, all the way to the bottom down there, they trampled a ton of forage and then, if you remember right, we moved the wire over each day and kept it back fenced in because the water tank is down at the bottom of the hill. Oh, look what it grew back. So, people say, but Greg, you're wasting grass. You don't eat it, you're wasting grass. Well, okay. I guess I'm going to keep wasting grass because look what you get back. Folks, it's a savings account. It's the same thing as having a savings account. That's what it is. You put it on the ground, you feed your soil microbes and your earthworms, and they pay you back tenfold. They literally do. So this would be the, uh, see this is the third time that we've grazed that this year. Came through with the mob early, then we came back with the bulls, and now the, the big herd, everything together. Mm -hmm. So you can see, this, somebody asked the other day, but Greg, what are you leaving behind? Well, this is what we're leaving. Okay, this is what we're leaving. Everything's covered. Everything's covered and trampled. It's been disturbed. I like disturbance, especially with a ruminant animal. I don't like disturbance with a plow where you're ripping the soil open. That's a good way to go broke. But... Uh, Especially in these hills. You don't want to rip these, these hills open. The old timers did it. They plowed these hills with mules. And that's why we don't have a lot of topsoil today. But we, we're reversing that. We're very optimistic about what our farms are starting to look like. With the ruminant animal trampling it. So those of you all that are just getting started. Don't get discouraged. You can do exactly what we're doing here. It's just going to take you some time. And, you know, the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, your, your grazing program's not going to be built in a day either. It takes time. And it takes years of good management. Stay with it. Stay with it. You can do this. And you will reach a plateau. And you're going to go, wow, it was worth it. We got here. Okay? You will and you can do this. People said the other day, well, how many cows do you need to make a living? Well... That's a $64,000 question. It depends what your lifestyle is like and what do you want it to be like. Everybody has a different level of what they think they need to live. Some people can live on, you know, say sixteen, twenty thousand $20,000 a year if they've got everything paid for. Uh, some people need $100,000 a year. So it all depends, or maybe more, I don't know. It depends how many toys you have, I guess. But I can tell you this much, it doesn't take much to run a mob of animals on land because we're not buying a lot of equipment we're not purchasing a lot of outside inputs and i'd a lot rather put my money in something like that look at that Woo. Yeah. folks this is wealth there's animals here that we can feed people with we can feed neighborhoods with you feed your community it's all being grown by sunlight. So no matter what happens to fossil fuels or, or all of our input costs, as long as we can get out here and move a wire, these animals are going to reproduce for us. And they're going to do this. 
There is no more regenerative uh, oh, farming yeah. practice than grazing. Plan grazing, mob grazing, whatever you want to call it. Okay, it's a wonderful, wonderful system. It's a, it's it's more than a system. A system you just plug in numbers and it cranks out a number. This is management. It changes every single day, and you've got to be on the lookout for what's changing. You got to be on the lookout. So we've we've caught a couple of really timely rains and. Uh, in July, which is unbelievably phenomenal. We usually don't get that, but we did this year. And so we're very thankful for that. But look at what the cattle are gonna be going on to. I'm gonna walk down into this paddock and show you all exactly what I'm talking about. Well, right there, I mean, where they're coming in the paddock, already, they've already trampled that. But by tonight, that whole ridge is going to look like that. So they're going to put down thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of carbon. They're just going to trample it on the ground. And that's going to grow us more grass. So it's just a, it's a, it's a cycle you repeat every day. And in the springtime, you're not tramping as much carbon because it's shorter and more vegetative. But right now, uh, we are tramping a ton of carbon. And we're happy. We're happy the cows are doing that for us. I'm on the lookout for 094, the new calf. That's 090. We saw them all but 094. Here's what we're doing. If we don't see 094, we're going to leave this lane open all the way back to the last farm. And uh, the mother can go back and get that calf. That's, that's what we're doing. So... But it's a, it's a beautiful day. We're talking here to the end of getting toward the latter part of July now. And uh, this is when we call the summer slump. This is when things shine as far as, uh, you know, your, 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 your hair coats on your animals, uh, your, your warm season grasses, the, the big blue stems, some of those are coming on now. We're, we're pretty happy to have those. So we, we took this wire up. We, we gave them the water tank down there. And then tonight they're going, there's a paddock we call it the High Line Ridge. There's a great big High Line that feeds a big power plant up there. It's a big right away. There's about 10 acres in that paddock. Uh, the cattle will go up on that hill tonight. And uh, But you can just see, I mean, my goodness, look at the forage in here. 60 days rest, mob of bulls came in here and trampled this, and then we left it alone. We didn't brush hog it, didn't do anything with it. Somebody asked me the other day if we brush hogging. No, we aren't. Uh, I did one farm, and then it got real dry, and I got scared. I took the brush hog off, and I haven't done any more brush hogging. Um, there are a couple paddocks on a few lease farms. There's a lot of trees coming up. And to keep the landowners happy, I am going to go in there and clip those probably around the 1st of September. And I'm going to clip it pretty high, but you let those trees get going, some of the landowners get a little bit nervous, especially when you see a lot of uh, honey locusts, the thorn trees. Uh, you just kind of keep that stuff at bay. Uh, if you don't clip them every year, or each, or maybe every other year, uh, they'll get up there four, five, six feet tall. And now you're talking uh, chainsaw. I don't want to do that. So we're keeping them down on those areas. This this farm here, this is the one that had all the cedars on it. And uh, we clipped them one time, got them short, and they've never showed their little heads again. I was going to call them their ugly little heads, but you know what? A cedar has its place, and that's on a really cold night. You've got the side of a hill or down in the valley somewhere, you've got a cedar grove. That is worth a million dollars. Because when it's cold and that wind's blowing, those cattle are comfortable in there. I call cedar groves outdoor barns. And so, yeah. Everything has a purpose. You know, maybe you don't figure out what it is today, but they do have a purpose. 
I still haven't found out <laughs> the purpose of ticks. But I guess maybe to keep people humble. I don't know. Um, you got to watch those ticks. Cause they're always out. And you have to check yourself each each day. And if you miss a day, you probably have one stuck under your armpit or something. But just keep an eye out for ticks. We do that. And now the little seed ticks are coming out. Uh, those are the ones that are the size of a tick. I'm sorry, uh, a dot. If you take a real sharp pencil and make a spot on a piece of paper, that's the size of these ticks. First time I saw one, I'm like, that's not a tick. That's a freckle. It's not. They're these little bitty guys. They call them seed ticks, and they're, they're just now starting to come out. And the best way to get them off is with duct tape. Just take duct tape and go up and down your arm if you see them. You'll feel them. You may not see them, but you'll feel them. They're little bitty guys, and uh, they'll leave a red welt on you if you leave them on there for a day or two. But normally you'll feel them within several hours, and you can get them off. There's a few patches of weeds out here. People say, Greg, you don't have any weeds. Yes, we do. Here's one right here. This is called lance leaf ragweed. It's by far the worst one we have. Um, I haven't found anything that'll eat that. But uh, with uh, unrolling hay and tramping carbon on the ground, folks, this whole farm was lance leaf ragweed. The whole farm was when we leased it. And uh, I'm actually standing on the 40 that we bought or the cows bought. We still have an 80 to the east over here that the landowner's daughter owns, but we bought this 40. And uh, it's amazing what's happened to it. It's just a beautiful piece of ground, beautiful piece of grass. Um, the boys this morning went down in the timber checking for new calves and they uh, <laughs> then, then came out all smiles. They had a, ch a chantrail, a mushroom, and he said there's a there's a circle of them down there like 50 feet across. So we're going to go get a five-gallon bucket. And we're going to go mushroom picking this morning because the chanterelles are really good eating. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a mushroom feed courtesy of Mother Nature. That's pretty cool. I think the boys are excited to go get some mushrooms. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I want everybody out there to stay safe. Keep your chin up. There's a lot of doom and gloom today, uh, you know, the, all the stuff going on in the world. But you know what? Don't get sucked in by that. Do something positive in your life today. Keep your direction going. Have a goal. Write down those goals. Check them off as you complete them. And folks, you can do anything in this world that you want to do. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Because you can. You absolutely can and that's because you've already set it up in your mind. You can see it. You can see that vision. And you will get there. This may not be one year. But if you're willing to give it 10 years, I promise you, you will get there. And it will be worth it. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Everyone have a great day. And we'll see you all down the road. And hit that subscribe button on the way out. And that like, if you would. Thank you.